Good evening, and welcome to Views with Joyce Waddell. I want to thank you for joining us this evening. Our topic for this evening is growing wealth. And we all have heard of people starting careers, investing in businesses, and just investing in anything that can make money. They've always dreamed of being wealthy, of growing wealth, not rich, but wealthy. And when you say wealthy, you're thinking about more than being rich. You're thinking about wealth that will last throughout your lifetime. You're thinking about ways that you will make money work for you rather than you work for money. And so our guest tonight has been very successful in helping people to grow wealth. We see people who are leaving college. One of the things that they always say, or many of them will say, they want to be financially independent. Even as low as elementary school, I was talking with a group of young men about what the future looked for them, what dreams they had for themselves. And of the 20, five of them said they wanted to be rich. And I started thinking, and as I talked to them and listened to them, about how did you think you could do that? They talked about careers that were lucrative. One of them said he wanted to be a doctor. And I said, well, think about why do you want to be that? I thought he would say, I want to help people. I'm interested in, you know, health care. He said, no, because I want to be rich. That's even in the fifth grade. That's what they were telling me. And another one said he wanted to be an, a football player. I'm like, well, why do you want to be that? He said, I want to be rich. So even as young as elementary school, they started thinking about wealth, young people. So our topic tonight is growing well. And our guest has helped many, many people. Secrets too. And they're really they're not secrets. They're pathways to well. So welcome. Thank you, Joyce. Pleasure being here. Okay. Now we talked about diamonds. You know, th there was a movie star said that diamonds are a girl's best friend. Indeed. <laughs> are diamonds a girl's best friend? Yes, ma'am. It could be a man's or a child's, too. <laughs> mm -hmm. And diamonds come in all sizes, don't they? Correct. Yes. And what often young women want the largest diamond. Mm -hmm. It's something about having a, a ring with a large diamond, isn't it? Yes. And when they get one that has a small diamond, they... <laughs> wish that they had one yes they do oftentimes <laughs> with the large diamond rather yeah. than not being rather than being grateful <laughs> for the small diamond yes mm -hmm. and we talk about diamonds you know we talk about money don't we yes we do mm -hmm. everybody yes, wants everybody want lots of money don't they? yes they do we all do you want to give me a lot of money yes ma'am you want to count it out for <laughs> <me>? <laughs> Three, four, five, six, seven. It's $8. Okay. <laughs> so here we have $800. $800. But $800 can translate. We can double that, can't we? Yes, we can. How, how do we do that? Diamond Cat Biz is a commodity pool that uses rough diamonds as commodity to create or generate the wealth for our contributors. So, the example we oftentimes give is say you have $800. I got $800. Okay. You contribute into our pool in Diamond Cap. We go over to one of our sources in, let's say, Tanzania. They provide us with the highest quality rough diamond. Okay. Um, we already know our buyer's specifications as far as grade quality. So, we tell them the desired grade. They provide it to us. Then we go over to our buyer, who is basically the, the jeweler. He's in, he's in Africa now. Um, this person that you're giving this money to is in Africa. Yes, or in Dubai, or, you know, there's multiple sources of diamonds. Uh, maybe even Guyana. But um, all of it's Africa. 
Well, no, because there are diamonds in other places other okay. than Africa. People don't, um, people don't, some people don't even know that, but they are. So like Dubai is in uh, India. However, there, oh. there are diamond mines there. There are also diamond mines in Africa. But could I, as a person, go over there and buy my own diamonds? <laughs> Can I do? Um, if you had the proper connections, sure. Um, but most don't. So that's why. I and that's where we come in. Okay. You also want to make sure if you were to do something like that, you would want a gemologist handy to ensure that you are actually getting a diamond and not something that is manufactured or a counterfeit. Okay, so we can look at these. Mm -hmm. We don't know just by looking at them with the eye, what do we have, do we? Correct, no. This looks like a diamond, doesn't it? Yes, it does. But is it one? No. We don't know, do we? We don't know, we don't know, unless it's tested and certified by a licensed gemologist. And then he will tell us? Yes. And diamonds come in, do you, are you buying these diamonds in the rough or are you buying them already? We're, not, we're buying them in the rough. Because um, they're coming out of the mine. In exactly, the exactly. We're buying them in the rough and is selling them to the buyer or the jeweler so that he can cut and polish them and or we, they call it process it. Okay? And it looks like and this. And it will look like that. But that is not how a rough diamond looks. If you would happen to go on our site on www.diamondcatbiz.com, we actually have re uh, real video footage. It looks like a coal, does, piece of coal, doesn't it? No, mm -mm. it's a white stone. Once it's, col once it's cleaned, it's actually a white stone, but it is not that clear. It's not, okay, not this brilliant. It's yes, and it's not that defined of a shape. Okay. It's very um, irregular. In but shape. It, in the end, it will look like this. Yes, correct. And so we take that $800 rough diamond and then sell it to our buyer for, um, he's going to sell it, he's going to buy it from us for half the price so of what he eight, will get once he's done and he sells it. So he's going to take this $800? Yes. We take the $800, purchase the rough. Okay. Then we go to our buyer and then he's going to buy that rough from us for half of what he can get once he's done cutting and polishing it. So he could get about... For the 68, yeah, he can get about 6500 to $7,000 for an $800 stone once he gets done cutting and polishing it. So he's going to buy it from us for half of what he'll get. So if he can get $7,000 for that $800 rough, he's going to buy it from us for about 3500 So then from that 3500 we give you, the investor, 1600 which doubled your contribution. So I started off with eight, and how how, how long was it going to take me to get double? <laughs> <laughs> well, it depends. Maybe, maybe one year, maybe two years. Well, it depends on how much you contribute to the fund. The more you contribute, the shorter amount of time it will take. And the reason is because it actually <laughs> defines the cap in diamond cap. Cap is in diamond cap because it uh, it explains what has to happen for the purchase, for us to have enough funds for the purchase to occur. So, so you have to have several people, uh, lots of people contributing. Yes, yes. And then you have a pool of money. Yes, because you understand, although we use one stone as an example for a purchase, no one would really go all the way to Africa with cost and travel and things of that nature just to purchase one stone. What usually happens is one would purchase a parcel or that's a group of stones and you would do that all at one time. So a, a typical parcel, a good size parcel would be about uh, $150,000, okay? So let's say you came in and you contributed. So $800 is not enough. Really. No, not to go over and that's what the. I mean, it's not even enough to, to if you're looking for 150, and one person's coming with 800, that's, that's not enough. It's not enough to make the purchase profitable, yes. No, it's not even when you put it with other, other contributors. Yes. It's not enough. Right, but, once, but if you have your 5,000 and they contribute their 5,000, and then we all come together and it combines to create, to, to uh, total. Because you're trying to get 150,000. Exactly, then we go over make the purchase and everyone's, you know, uh, return is distributed properly. 
I understand. Now, if you came in on a corporate tier, that's a whole nother ball game. If you came in on a corporate tier, let's say you knew someone um, or you who had 150,000 exactly, and they wanted to. We invest treat it. that yes, we act on that immediately, and that is returned within 90 days. And that's returned that amount of money. Yes, and it's, du it's doubled. Doubled within 90 days. Yes. Okay. Okay, audience, we are talking about creating wealth, and there are many ways to create wealth, and wealth is what the American dream is about. Seems like it would be helping people, contributing mm -hmm. to those who are less fortunate, mm -hmm. contributing to our economy, contributing to our ecological systems, the environment. But when you try, talk to a hundred people, and out of that hundred, 90 of them will say, wealth is what they're seeking. Mm -hmm. As number one, they may come to environmental issues as number two. They may come to a quality way of life for number three. But when you ask them about wealth and you have wealth to the top of the hundred people survey, nine of them said wealth was what they were seeking. And why is this country so wealth oriented? Why? Any reason that we thought about that? Why people seek to be rich? Is it because it's freedom? I believe it's freedom to do what they feel their purpose is or what their passion is in their career. Freedom in not worrying about where your next meal is going to come from or worrying about if you can pay your light bill. Um, freedom in being able to fund your children's college, you know, tuition, paying for a house full outright maybe even purchasing your dream car without having to acquire a loan. Um, and that's the beauty, again, of also Diamond Capital. I mean, we've been talking about the individual aspect or the household aspect, but this can also be utilized in community service initiatives. Um, Where you have, like, maybe organizations want to go in together. Exactly. Um, they could be social organizations. Exactly. There could be just a group of people who have come together and formed mm -hmm. an organization. Indeed, indeed. Um, you know, whether it's housing initiatives for uh, programs for children, um, we are open for all types of contributors to help them obtain the wealth or obtain the, the financial goal that they have in mind. Why is it that um, as African Americans, we didn't think about investing much earlier in moving forward through the space, mm -hmm. the economic space, the economic ladder? I would like to think it's because we as a people. A trust factor? A, it's a, a just afraid? I would say it's a combination of one, not being accustomed to looking ahead. We've always been, uh, it's always been a priority to look at now, surviving for now whether it was paying that bill, the next bill, or having enough food to eat. So some have not even had, have the vision or the mind to look forward or to plan for it. And the second thing is fear. Um, but I think that's a cross cut of lines. But they yes, haven't especially. seen it happen. People have to, you have to see it. Yes, but at the same time, what people must understand also is that in addition to having to have to see it, someone has to jump out and do it first. Someone has to be the first so that all others can see. So That's a risk factor also. It is. It's all, it, like, it's with anything else. Mm -hmm. It's a risk. And the greatest risk that you could end up having in anything is coming up empty. True. However, I, you know. But you want to be positive. Exactly. When, when, you, when you set out to do something. Yes. When you set out to put your hard-earned dollars. Of course. That you work for all of, of your life. Of course. And to the trust of someone else of with the vision of being wealthy. Of course. And you know, um, one thing I have no I one thing I have noticed when very uh, affluent people are interviewed, none of them ever said I didn't take a risk. <laughs> All of them jumped out, whether it was them leaving their job, whether it was their